Hey, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Colpack and Izzo podcast, brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Colpack. I'm Dom Izzo. North Dakota State set for an FCS semifinal showdown Friday night with the Dukes of James Madison, the swan song for these two schools probably for a long, long time as the Dukes are set to move up to the FBS. A date in Frisco, Texas awaits the winner. We are recording this, Jeffrey, on the five-year anniversary of when JMU came here and beat the Bison to end the title streak. And uh, I don't, we don't have the kind of storylines like that that we did five years ago, but this sets up for what's going to be a, a heck of a game. Well, I think there's storylines that um, go beyond the, the field, really. And let's start with JMU leaving for FBS. Yep. That's, that's huge. I mean, uh, and, and I'm kind of pissed off at JMU. I, I said this on a Harrisonburg radio station earlier this week, like, you know, you guys leaving, come on. It's just, it does us no favors here in, in Fargo, North Dakota, because these are two heavyweights. This is what it's all about, Dom. Yep. This, this playoff game, this semifinal, this is what, when the framers built the one double a playoffs back in the early eighties, this is what they had in mind. And we've seen a lot of them over the years. Unfortunately, we may not see more of these in future years. Yep. And Enjoy while it's here because this is the heavyweight. This is the heavyweight. This is a uh, Razor Ali, right? Now, you're a boxing guy. I what? am. Well, is this the national championship game? Can I go so far to no. say that? Should that? Should no. these? Are these the no, two South best Coast teams? State's too good. Okay. Yeah. No way. Okay. South Coast State's too good. Montana State crushed Sam Houston. Yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit about uh, Sam Houston yeah. and the and the uh, what the announcers were doing, the broadcasters were doing at the end of that game on. On Saturday, I look at James Madison's website right now, and it says the sun is rising with the JMU logo and the Sun Belt Conference logo. So, I mean, it's all, it, they're just, and, and why wouldn't you embrace it? Obviously, this is what their future holds, but I, I look back at that game in 2016 when Brian Shore was running all over the place and Khalid Abdullah and how loud it was. Jeff, you could argue that game was as loud as Georgia Southern when Robbie Grimsley had that pick when the game was tied at 17, but really the seeds of what happened uh, in Frisco two times over in 17 and in 19 started with that JMU win in, in 2016. Well, yeah, finally somebody dented the armor yep. of the Bison in the Dome in the playoffs. It takes a great quarterback. It, it takes Brian Shore, who, remember, he made some plays with his legs oh. and, 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 and gambled on a couple throws and won. So it, it, was there a little fortune there? Absolutely. But he was fantastic that game. Cole Johnson's going to have to be the same way now on Friday night. I don't know if he can do the stuff with his legs. That'll be the question mark. 39, guys, 39 going, touchdowns and two picks this year for amazing, Cole Johnson. Yeah, Amazing stats. Yep. Now, what do we make of that? It, CAA is not as strong as what it was. Bingo. You said it earlier this week, and you're right on. You've been saying it all year, and I echo that sentiment. I don't care what the people out east say. We saw two CAA teams this year, and I know where they finished in Albany and Towson, but uh, the league is definitely not what it was in 2016. It wasn't what it was in 2018 or 2019. The league is down, and and that's a that's a problem for the FCS going forward with James Madison leaving, which we can talk about another time. So... Has he padded his stats against bad teams? The answer to me is yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll go along with that because those st- a great league doesn't give up those stats. It it does. Jason Shelley was tremendous this year, and he didn't have near no. those stats because no. the defense is he played against were they they just were not civvy like that. That's a civvy defensive league, man. Well, thirty nine and two. How many winning teams did they play during the regular season, or teams that finished with? A, with a, I'll answer it. The the answer is one, and that was Villanova, and they lost that game to Villanova. Now, obviously, they played teams with winning records in the playoffs in southeastern Louisiana and Montana. But look at the teams that they played: Moorhead State, Maine, Weber was not good this year. New Hampshire, Richmond, Delaware fired its coach. Elon Campbell, William and Mary was okay. Uh, they struggled at the end. And then Towson. We saw Towson up close, and they put 56 on Towson. So uh, am I, I'm not saying they're not good, but I am saying I don't think they're as good as the team we saw in Frisco in both 17 and 19. Well, and NDSU doesn't have Trey Lance on, on this that side is of true. the ball either. That is true. They don't true. have Trey Lance. They, uh, Cam Miller's been solid. He's been good. He's not an NFL draft pick, I don't think, but 
So you have that balance. I think it's going to come down to two factors. Number one, JMU has a young offensive line. They yep. start three redshirt freshmen and a sophomore. Can that old line handle the atmosphere of the Fargo Dome? Because we believe that this atmosphere will be perhaps the best all season. It yep. should be. Yes. It should it's, be. it's not like going to be a sellout, though, Colfax, which is another story we could talk about. But you're right. It will be much louder than it has been probably all year. And number two, Christian Watson, Christian Watson, <laughs> Christian Watson. Yeah. Is a bison. I think he's going to play. We'll see. But the Bison needs some sort of a vertical threat anyway in the passing game, or else JMU is going to throw 15 guys in the box <laughs> or however many you can. And we've seen their corners have always been good. That game in 16, yep. NDSU could not get the ball down the field. Easton Stick couldn't get it to Darius Shepard, couldn't get it to RJ Erzendowski, and they loaded the box, and that was a big reason why they won that game. The Bison couldn't pass it down the field. Oh, the heat's on the receivers to yep. get open some way, some shape, or some yep, form. I agree. It didn't happen last week at East, no. East Tennessee. Nope. It didn't happen. They they were not getting open. And that's a that's just a man all man all. You gotta find a way, right? I, I don't know how to explain Absol- it. Right. Absolutely. I mean, they had the one pass to Josh Babich, and he's a tight end. I know he catches the ball quite a bit, but Braylon Henderson, Raja Nelson, Phoenix Sproles are going to have to find a way to separate from the corners, and they were they have they didn't do it against SIU either. They didn't really do it in that game. No, no. So Watson hamstring full speed or not? Is he giving it? A, I mean, will he give it a go if he's hurt? I think so. I'm sure his agent, his <laughs> agent won't. No, <laughs> his agent would say no. Even yeah. if he, what if he's a decoy out there, Colfax? Just because we've seen that before with other teams. But they've done that to freak out the bison, and then the guy doesn't do anything. Uh, even if Watson dresses and gets out there just to say, just to play with the minds of James Madison, I don't know if Madden's would do that because you you only can dress so many guys. I don't know if you want to quote unquote waste a spot in a guy that's not going to play. I'm no doctor, but remember when Darius Shepard, when Kleiman said, I got one half? <laughs> yes. And we're going to shoot up his shoulder, yeah. and Kleiman took the second half against Northern <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Can you shoot up a hamstring? I don't know if you could do that, but that's a <laughs> that's that... a huge deal. It's a huge deal if he could play or not in this game. I look at their wide receivers. Antoine Wells, number seven, 14 touchdown receptions. Chris Thornton, number eight, 13 touchdown receptions. Both guys get vertical. Wells is a really good player. And that will be, I'm assuming that's Courtney Eubanks' job tomorrow night, is right there on number well, seven. Is it? One has 78 catches, yeah. one has 77. One of the, who, who I know, one of the other, Courtney Eubanks, will be on all night tomorrow. It's amazing how similar those two receivers are. They're one touchdown within each other in receptions, one catch within each other. Yep. Yards per catch, they're a couple yards within each other. Yards per game within 12. Wow, that's a, that's a balanced attack. I, I'm not sure if any of these guys are the, like the Stapletons. We saw Riley Stapleton for a couple times. I mean, his height, yeah. his size, he was a, his catch radius, as they like to say, is just tremendous. These guys are good. I don't know if they're in the Stapleton category. We'll find out tomorrow night, but uh, that's for Jaden Price and Courtney Eubanks. And those were question marks we talked about in the preseason. Those have been answered. Yeah. They've been great all year long. This will be their biggest challenge, I think, by far coming up tomorrow. You've been calling for a defensive touchdown for seven years now. <laughs> do I, you ask me if it it's, again? You're asking me if it's going to happen tomorrow? I, man, yeah. if it does, it'll blow the roof off the dome. It will if it happens in a semifinal game like it did when Levon Perry had a fumble return touchdown against New Hampshire. Uh, I think they, I think they get a pick. I don't know if they return it for a touchdown, but I think they get one. Eubanks okay. has been so close. How about this? I'll call his first pick of his collegiate career okay. tomorrow because he had – he had two chances last week against East Tennessee and, and went right through his hands. All right, I'll hold you to it. We're on that for we <laughs> breakfast on me. How about that? Right. One way or the wow, other. Generous. Uh, Kurt Signetti, always an interesting fellow, uh, earlier this week talking about the – I think him and Matt Eds both played down this this rivalry talk. And I don't, I don't know how you feel about it, if they've played enough, if each team has won enough. And James Madison's only won the one time. Uh, against the Bison, but you mentioned it off the top. It's significant because these two teams aren't going to play anymore, and I think it's that's a loss on both sides. I think JMU's going to feel it as well, don't you? I think it's a rivalry. It's a postseason rivalry, yeah. and when JMU won on a Friday night and the Bison had to play East Tennessee on a Saturday, oh, the overlooked factor was there. Yes. Absolutely. 
I mean, the overlookage was just, uh, it was, it was drooling. It was so obvious. <laughs> I agree but with you. And that everybody, was, everybody. I mean, yeah, these I, teams want, I mean, these teams know each other. They played each other in high level games. They've all been high level games. As far as what's at stake, it's all been postseason. Too bad JMU apparently won't bring NDSU out for a bye. Yeah, that would be something else. That would be a lot of fun. The biggest difference to me, Jeff, also from that 2016 game, how beat up the Bison were at the end of the year that season. Now, granted, I know they're dealing with some injuries, but defensively-wise, they're humming right now, and that's a major difference from the 16 team to what we're seeing uh, for this team that's going to be out there tomorrow night. Yeah, both teams are pretty good. The Bison first in the FCS in scoring defense. The Dukes seventh. Rushing defense, NDSU third, the Dukes fourth, total defense third and fifth. <laughs> this game, I, can I say what my pick yeah, is? Yeah, go not? for it. I mean, are you expecting a low scoring game? First one to 17 wins. Wow, 17. Okay. Yeah, that's the number. That's a good call. I think you're probably, you're not off on that. I, I think I said 21 17, something like that. I don't expect a lot of points either. This is a good. Two really good defensive teams. And I know you visited with him, and I won't give away too much for your game day story on Saturday. Braden Thomas is a key to me in this game. If he's able, mm-hmm. and you mentioned JMU's young offensive line, if he's able to get around them, we know Cole Johnson can't move. Look out for number 98 on, on Friday night. What a, what, a, what a great addition via the transfer portal. There you, you go. Know what the transfer portal loseth, you gaineth. Yes. Bra- I know he's no Jabril, but he's not bad. No. Well, He's been a okay. lost Jabril, but man, this guy has been pretty impactful and it's really been needed after losing Spencer Wagey early in the year. He's, he's got a chance on the next level. He's certainly going to give it a shot. He was, I want to say lightly recruited, but not really heralded for a division one recruit out of high school in Bismarck went to the university of Mary for a year. Yep. And that didn't work out. Didn't like the way the team was flowing. He called it. Um, I can't remember what this word was. It was, <laughs> Shifty. <laughs> I shifty. did hear. I heard him say that. Yeah, uh, moved to Mankato. Mankato was a national title threat for three years there. Eventually finished runner-up. Wanted to see the next level. Wasn't sure if COVID and NSIC and D two football what would happen there. Which so it didn't. Makes sense to to give NDSU a shot. He's been he's been fantastic. Lights out. R- runner-up. Runner-up. Defense of the year in yep. the valley. And if you played full time. He, yeah, he, he missed two games as well with missed an injury. Games, so, yeah. I mean, he still put up, what was it, nine sacks, I think, during the regular season. He has been, he's been the guy, Jeff, we talked about. Who is going to be the Greg Menard, the Kyle Emanuel, the Derek Tuska up front? He's filled that spot. Yes. Yep. He's been that dude, and he's been that guy. He's going to really have to be that guy tomorrow night. What do we, Mike just tweeted out here, according to NDSU's website, says about 1,600 tickets are available. That's not counting if JMU returns any. So obviously it's going to be a bigger crowd, but it's not a sellout. And I know you wrote about it yesterday. What do you make of this now? If, if the if they can't sell out for this game, then who are they going to sell out for? Yeah, I didn't write about it. I think Big E wrote Big e about did. it. Big E did, okay. Yeah, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of talking <laughs> yeah. about it, aren't you? Well, I am, but I want to put a note on it with this. Because you know what I All mean? Right. Like Because we, t- we both said there'll be a huge crowd next week, and there'll be a better one. I, it just it's not it's not a sellout, and I thought it would be. That's that's my two cents. Well, Mike Mike took us to task. He did. He goes, he goes, <laughs> it's not. It's Dom Wi-Fi Izzo and Jeff Beer Goldback. Those, those aren't the reasons. But I would argue it, this is on the dome authority. You know, it, it, it's on the city to to figure out what to do next with the dome, and and it's got to be swanked up at some point. Yep. This, this is not Rob Solbuck's deal. His job is to run the dome. He's got to make sure there's enough workers to put the turf down and, yep. and, and run the, run the, this is not the GM's deal. This is the, this is the leaders. This is the city leaders. The city leaders built this place, Dom, in the park district and, right. and the park court and Goose Johnson and his vision. They're the ones that built it. It's up to them now to maintain it and move forward. And I know there's been plans in the works and I, maybe it's close. It's time to get Apparently off. The, it's time to get off the pot now. Right. But it, it's up to the, uh, the people will run run this city, and, and this is the most important facility by a mile in the city. It's up to them. The ball's in their court. I wholeheartedly agree on that. Cole Peck and Izzo Podcast brought to you by Gate City Bank. I want to give uh, you the floor first uh, for the two-minute obituary on Sam Houston and their ride in the FCS. I 
at the end of the game, if people didn't watch the Montana State game, the ESPN broadcasters were fed this from Casey Keeler about Sam Houston was tired. They had played, this is their 22nd game of the calendar year, and they just ran out of gas. That is baloney. They, they got boat raced by a better team. They finally faced competition that was as good or, as it turns out, better than them. And that was the result, Jeff. You're not going to hear Matt Ens say it tomorrow night. Hey, they're playing their 23rd game, the Bison are, tomorrow night. You know what he's not going to say? We were tired if they lose tomorrow. If anybody has an argument, it's South Dakota State. Yeah. They played in the title game. They've been on the road the whole month here. They're in their fourth. Just, they're, they're, they in their, they're in their fourth different time zone. Some on Saturday. Yeah, they, they haven't been going to Vermilion or they haven't been going to, uh, you know, Carbondale Fargo or Grand yeah. Forks. Right. Yeah, they've been going all over the country, and, and so and, and what did they do in the second half? They flattened Villanova on the road yes. in the second half yep. when you should be tired and, and you're fatigued. Don't give me that. Sam Houston, no. The, no, ja- the Jackrabbits are about to play their 25th game Saturday of 2021. 25. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that this has been, uh, I bet, I don't know if uh, Zimmer at the Argus Leader has added it up. It's got to be the most miles or, or given some sort of pushing the record yeah. for most miles traveled in one FCS playoff run. It's unreal. I want to give a quick shout out to Viggs. I'm going to have Randy Vegan on my show tomorrow. What a job here, Jeff. Obviously, Montana State had had a great year. They You watched the Brawl of the Wild game. They didn't look good against Montana, but boy, they found it with their quarterback going into the portal literally two days for their playoff opener, and then they go on the road with their backup, quote unquote, and put up 42 against the defending champs. That was really, really impressive. I think the QB portal going in, or the QB going into the portal in retrospect, the guy was on his way to get benched. Maybe a blessing in disguise. Probably by subtraction. Yep. Yep. Get rid of that distraction. See you later. We don't, we, we don't need your whining all about me. I'm not playing right now. So hit the road, Jack. <laughs> Maybe that was a good thing. Yeah. Maybe that was a good thing for the team. So now they get another home game. And then you mentioned what South Dakota State has coming in here. The Jacks are again favored on the road. We said it when the bracket came out. They could get hot, and here they are, Jeff, a win away from going to Frisco. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's good job. It's a good coaching job and a good job of uh, what do we have in this final four now? We have four teams that are pretty physical. Yep. That and John Stiglmeyer has done a good job of, of recruiting and getting his team to that kind of standard over the years, and they've just gotten better and better at it, and now here they are. Montana State, that's Craig Bowl Jr. out there, by the way, who's <laughs> put that team together. Who likes to play Vigan's defense seen, and run the ball. Yeah, Vegan seen how what gets you this far. NDSU, of course, has the blueprint on it. So this is if, – if you're out there in the FCS and, and putting a team together, and Casey Keeler, for all his brashness, was right last spring. They had to get much better defensively and more yep. physical, and they did yep. for a spring season. But that's how you get this far. That's how you do it. And you, you can't outscore teams. You can't sit there and try to outscore teams. So you're saying, for the, for, for, you're saying for the other 100 schools sitting at home this weekend to yeah. watch these four, because this is how to build a team and go and, and do something special. Well, maybe your third-string quarterback makes a great safety, James <laughs> Hendricks. Yeah, that's right. right? Maybe, maybe your backup quarterback makes a really good linebacker, Esley Thornton. Yep. So you're gonna get your athletes on defense. I, I will point this out, by the way. Viggs has had some of his best play calling games against the Jackrabbits. How much do you think Stig knows that? Really? Uh, he has to know mm. that. You remember that? How do you know that? Well, you remember that great uh, trick play they ran with Ryan Smith in the playoffs in 2012. Remember when Smith lined up next to Brock wow. Jensen? They snapped it to him and got in. I mean, he's had some really good games against Stig play calling when he was the Bison OC. So I'll just throw that out there. Well, that's kind of a reach, Dom. That was 2012. <laughs> I'm just saying. Come on. Come By the on. way. Come on, Wi-Fi is up. You're speaking of uh, of SDSU. Sounds like Stig may be losing his OC. Jason Eck looks like he's going to be the new guy at Idaho. What do you make oh, of that? Is. Yeah, it looks like uh, fo- thought, Football Scoops it says they're zeroing in on Eck to be the guy. Yeah, I thought he was going to finish runner-up in that job, but apparently he's the guy now. Yeah. Wow. Good for him. You Eck, know that's He's done a heck of a job there as – they're OC. I mean, he's turned SDSU's offense into they are difficult to stop. Well, good hire for Idaho because he's going to take what works. And those are the teams that try to outscore people. Yep. 
they, you know, those big sky Idaho teams and they came back from FBS and people thought they would just be marching into the playoffs. No, no, they're, they're, they're just, they're too wimpy. I think I'm one of those, uh, by the way, I think I'm one of those guys. I thought Idaho would be good in FBS. It has not worked out by a long shot there. It has not worked out. Uh, Before we wrap here. Yeah, this is real man football when you get to the playoffs. There's no doubt. Uh, I know you're working on a story. It's coming out in the paper uh, in a couple days. Logan Campbell did it as well. For people that watch the the Bison men's basketball game Monday night, that was a really good win. A really good win against Indiana State, considering they couldn't stop the Sycamores in the first half. Sam Greasel back, 25 points, emotional after the game. Stomach ulcer was ended up being the the root cause of what happened. Bleeding, vomiting uh, when they're out in San Luis Obispo where the Bison, before they play Cal Poly, he misses a month. And it, it was life-threatening, Jeff. It really was for, for Sam Greasel's life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Potentially life-threatening. I mean, and, and I've talked to several people involved in this story and that's why it's just, it's uh, the, I'm not sure the word, the harrowing nature yeah. of when he was on his way to the hospital, all the blood in the hotel room from vomiting down to, you know, I've talked to all angles down to Dave Richmond riding in the back of a fire truck to, to the hospital. And by the way, he's next and the guy in the, in the fire truck used to pitch for the Red Hawks. Wow. That's wild. That's wild. <laughs> Yeah. And I just, you know, I just got on talk to his parents who were in LA and then drove up in the middle of the night, you know, and all those different emotions. And I, I can see why Sam was a little emotional after, after the win. Absolutely. We saw him back. Obviously he played more minutes against uh CSUN last Friday, just what he means to the team. That's a completely different basketball team. We've seen the last two games. Yeah, I didn't realize it until, until he's not there. Yeah. And you point to some of their early struggles and getting blown out. You know, you think, okay, what's wrong with his team? Yep. Maybe it's as simple as that. You know, he's the leader. He's not the most loudest guy, but he's their leader. And I always thought, and off the court too. I yes. Mean, yes. Yes. What he, what he does away from the basketball court is as admirable as I've seen for any young, any young man or woman. It's really impressive. Yeah. And NDSU is going to miss him. Yes. I, I haven't gotten to the, I don't know if he's coming back for another year. I would imagine he's probably moving on. If I was a betting man, I'd say he and Edie, who both can come back. I imagine they're probably going to leave with Rocky. I think they, they'll probably all go together. Right. And that's, you know, for another, another day for that. But um, yeah, it's one of those, uh, one of those stories that in in journalism where you just, you, you try to get every detail and every time I get another detail, I just go, wow. Yeah. Huh. Right. This is not so. Bison will play Pacific on Friday night, and then Summit League play opens. I'm not a fan of this. I'm going to go off on it next week of it opening before Christmas when the it's students horrible. aren't here. It's just terrible. Yeah, it's, it's it's not like it's a 16-team league. Can't they figure this out? Right. I just don't understand it. Why the three biggest games of the Bison home schedule, well, maybe not three of the four, because Oral Roberts, I think, will draw a good crowd. South Dakota, South Dakota State, and UND are all happening, A, within eight days of one another, and during holiday break. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. Well, Josh Fenton, the new commissioner. There you go. Uh, do, you care about the, do you care about your your programs making money? I mean, <laughs> right. You know, do you care about attendance? Oh, God. Goodness. Get some people in the stands. Should we do a couple picks here before we go? Let's do a couple I, picks. I know you love... Uh, you love the swack and your guy, Coach Prime. Jackson State is playing South Carolina State in the Celebration Bowl Saturday morning on WDAY, actually 11 a.m. After the big news yesterday that he got the top recruit in the country, they keep the mojo going. He's the second best recruit, Dom. Second. Whoever you look to. <laughs> is he playing? On, is he playing on Saturday? No, he's not he playing. Going, he's not playing. Right I, I, that, that wasn't the guarantee that he got for his NAL deal, I don't think. Oh. Uh, I, what a shocking story. Awesome story. That's a, Unbelievable. Yeah, that's just bizarre nope. as it gets in recruiting. Uh, I'm going to go with Jackson State. I think Deion's son, who is a Jerry Rice player, has been really good. Jamer Sanders. I'll go with the yep. best quarterback. I, I want to see, and Sam Herter put this out, the waiver be extended for them to get into the playoffs. If they're this good, let's see how they face against other quality FCS teams. What do you think on that? Love to see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Like, the, like the Ivy. Like the Ivy. 
I'm not calling him Coach Prime. I'm just calling him Coach <laughs> he's, Sanders. He's Come Dion. On. He's Dion I'm not Sanders. Falling. He's Dion. I'm not uh. falling into that. All right, the D3 championship. is They moved the D3 title game. It used to be in Salem, Virginia. Now it's in Canton, Ohio tomorrow night. North Central out of Illinois will take on Mary Harden Baylor out of Texas. So our, our old friends, Mount Union and Whitewater, both got beaten last weekend. So we got a couple of new finalists here. Yeah, I got to go with Mary Harden Baylor. They tore my heart out beating Whitewater in Wisconsin last week. <laughs> Just tore me up. I think I'm, I'm with you there. I'm on, I'm on Mary Harden Baylor to win that. They're 14-0. Uh, the D2 championship is Saturday night in McKinney, Texas at a high school stadium that we've seen is pretty impressive. Valdosta State out of Georgia. They're being rumored as a, a potential new FCS team against our friends from Ferris State and Michigan. Hmm. Two uh, traditionally good Division two programs. Yep. I know zero about this game. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with my friends from Ferris, Michigan. There's not a lot of D2 teams around there. Not a lot of FCS teams. Yep. I think it's a pretty good pool to recruit from. I'm taking uh, the Bulldogs. I'm going to go with Valdosta. I think they. Uh, I, I think there's some real momentum, by the way, for them in the Atlantic Sun to pair up. So we may see them in the FCS uh, before too long. All right, last one. The game, we're going to save the Bison pick for Bison game day, by the way. 6.30 yep. on WDAY on Friday night. South Dakota State, Montana State, 1 o'clock. Saturday on ESPN2. Right now, the Jackrabbits are a six-point favorite on the road. Yeah, I said this three weeks ago. I think SDSU is going to run its way to Frisco, and I'm still hanging on to that thought. I think. Do we know Pierre Strong's status? Don't know Strong's status right now. He was concussed in the game against Villanova early in that, did not play the rest of the way. I have not heard an update on what uh, the All-American It's going to matter. Is. It's going to be mid-30s. I still like yeah. Isaiah Davis in the backfield. I like the way... Uh, Montana State is, is is operating on the road and their mentality, and it's a, it's a new area for for the Bobcats. So I'm taking I'm taking the Jacks. I have predicted all along it was going to be NDSU, SDSU, and Frisco. So I'm not getting off the train right now. I think the Jackrabbits do it again. I, I expect a monster day from Isaiah Davis again. Even if Strong does play, I still think Davis he might be the better back. And I voted Strong for the Walter Payton. What does that tell you about how dynamic? that backfield is don't forget davis is pretty good he's really good don't forget everybody bison game day tomorrow 6 30 on wday jeff myself logan campbell kyle emmanuel will be inside the inside the dome yes not outside we'll be inside for the game on friday which is an 8 15 start so what is the deadline for you there buddy boy to get your stuff done oh about 10 minutes after the game (laughs) is over i don't know so there might be smoke coming out of colfax laptop to Not get good. this done. Just get the get the get the score right and hope everything <laughs> else works. Late night for all of us coming with an 815 start on ESPN2. For Jeff Colpack, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Colpack and Izzo podcast brought to you by Gate City Bank.